While rockets have been around since 13th century China, it wasn't until the 19th century that a Russian scientist by the name of Konstantin Tsiolkovsky formalized the mathematics governing their propulsion. The fundamental principle used in deriving Tsiolkovsky's equation is momentum. Momentum, as formulated by Sir Isaac Newton, is a vector that is the product of the mass and velocity of an object. While the equation for Newton's second law is most frequently stated as net force equals mass times acceleration, it can also be stated as the net force equals the rate of change of momentum with time. When the net outside force on an object or system of objects is zero, momentum stays constant. This is known as conservation of momentum. In the traditional formulation of the rocket equation, we ignore outside forces and hence can apply the conservation of momentum. Here is a popular way of derivation. Start with the rocket plus a differential mass of fuel traveling at velocity v. When the fuel is ejected, the rocket gains a differential velocity dv. The fuel, previously traveling with velocity v of the rocket, is ejected backwards with exhaust velocity ve. Ignoring outside forces, we can set up the conservation of momentum, equating the sum of the final momenta to that of the initial momentum of the system. After eliminating several terms on both sides of the equation, we only have two terms left. One for the rocket and one for the fuel expelled. At this point, we need to make a substitution, knowing that the differential mass of fuel expelled is also the differential mass lost by the rocket. Now we have our momentum differential. Remember that. We rearrange our differential equation into an integral for the change in velocity delta v. Note that we got rid of the negative sign by reversing the integration limits on the mass. Our final equation, the rocket equation, shows a logarithmic relationship between delta v and the mass of the rocket. Because delta V varies with mass, rocket engines often allow for variable fuel flow to control the thrust and hence acceleration.
During a real rocket launch, the external force of gravity cannot be ignored, and hence we insert it into our equation for Newton's second law. The differential momentum can be taken from the previous setup, but now we include its rate of change over time. When we set up our differential and subsequent integral equation, we see that gravity adds an extra term for the downward acceleration of gravity to the system. Once we complete the solution, we see that for a successful launch, the fuel needs to be exhausted at a rapid enough rate to overcome gravity. After launch, to put the rocket into orbit, it has to have gained sufficient horizontal speed and be outside of the atmosphere to eliminate drag. At that point, it can shut its engine off and have gravity, perpendicular to its velocity, pull it in free fall around the Earth. From here on, the rocket's motion can be described through centripetal acceleration, but we will leave that description and the derivation of Newton's version of Kepler's third law for another video.